we have harvested a lot of loofahs, and there's still loofahs on the vine. There are loofahs beneath the chase tree. There are loofahs on the trellis. There are loofahs amongst the mimosa pudica. There are loofahs with the Cuban oregano. There are loofahs beneath the galangal ginger. There are loofahs growing in front of the Blessed Mother. There are loofahs at the base of the Celosia argentia. This has been a good year for loofahs, and we only planted a few seeds. Even one loofah seed is probably gonna get you more loofahs than you need. But what can you do with loofahs? I'm very excited today to be joined by an actual scientist to talk about loofah, this incredible, amazing, unbelievably useful vegetable. Loofah aegyptica is one of the most fascinating plants. When I first discovered you no longer had to buy sponges from a sponge monger, I was hooked. I started growing loofahs. But the loofah has many uses besides being a sponge. Yeah, get it. Yeah, get it. He's, he's cracking it, Dad. Yay! It can also be used as a vegetable and cooked when it's young. Very young, like veal. If you want to grow loofah, wait until it gets warm. After all danger of frost, when the soil has warmed up, this is a warm season crop. You have to plant it when it's warm. So plant it when it's warm in moderately fertile soil. Give it something it can climb and Give it something like 20 feet between plants. We're talking a vigorous vine here. It will just run and run and run and run. And if you plant them too close, you just won't get as many loofahs. You don't want to crowd them out. So give them some space to climb on, give them some nice big trellises like these ones that I built in a previous video, and they will just run and run and run all the way through the summer into the fall, and they'll make loofahs for you and then you can do whatever you want to with the loofahs. There's so many uses. The loofah is also commonly used as a musical instrument in certain cultural traditions. The exterior of a loofah is a crispy skin, and inside there is a skeleton. And inside the skeleton are the seeds. Each one a unique genetic individual capable of making many more magnificent loofahs. The loofah is a trans-dimensional entity capable of space travel. When we lived down in the Caribbean on the beautiful island of Grenada, there's a beach there called La Sages, and there's a resort near the beach. And to one side of the resort, there is a great big tropical almond tree. And on that tropical almond tree, every year, there were just tons of loofah vines. They grew up that tree and self-seeded and came back. So if you are in a tropical climate, loofah might self-seed and you'll never, ever, ever be out of sponges again. Science has revealed the loofah to be of the kingdom of plants, the plantae. It is an old plant first discovered in the old times, before we discovered cucumber salad, there was loofah. When the earth's crust cooled, loofah was there. 
It was there. I saw it in a tree. Eating my dog. Probably 20, 25 years ago, a friend of ours named Gary needed a place to stay for a while and he was working on getting a job, getting his life together and that kind of thing. So he stayed with my grandparents in a spare room. And while he was there, now this was down in Fort Lauderdale where you have a really long growing season. While he was there, he planted some loofah seeds along their fence. He had been doing a little bit of work in the yard. He liked gardening. So he had rebuilt a compost pile for them and done some other stuff. But without really telling them, he planted loofahs. So after some time, there were all these thick vines running down the fence. And uh, I think my grandma was like, what, what, what are these? Oh, they're loofah, they're loofah. Of course, we, we didn't know what loofah were, but they continued to grow down the fence. They started to grow over into the neighbor's yard. They grew up in the trees that were near the fence. They climbed up the branches of the live oaks in the backyard off of the fence, and they started to look like the vine that ate the south. And so it started to make my grandparents nervous. As, as it would, uh, especially when you have a really long season like South Florida, there's not a time when the, the loofahs just were going to give up easily. So it, months and months and months of growth and more and more aggressive growth all down the fences. And then there were all these Zeppelin-like loofahs hanging all over the place. Finally, my grandma is like, just take these things out. So with some regret, he took all the vines down and he built these little makeshift racks in the backyard to dry the fruits that weren't all the way brown and crispy on the vine. And there were just racks of loofahs out there in the backyard of my grandparents' house. And that's the first time I ever remember seeing loofah grow. And he, and he told me, this is a sponge. This is a sponge that grows on a vine. And I, I thought that was really cool. My grandparents weren't quite so thrilled though. There are so many things that can be washed with a loofah. You can wash a pumpkin with a loofah. You could wash a rock. You could wash a tiny rock. You could wash a bell. You could wash your glasses. You could wash a shoe. You could wash a bottle of witch hazel. You could wash a dinosaur. I want a water bag. No, be quiet, you dirty. You could even wash another loofah. Julia F. Morton writes about the loofah, quote, the loofah is my homeboy. End quote. Now, if you've grown loofah and it has not made loofah gourds for you, there's a couple of things that could be going on. Either one, you have too short a season, or two, you planted it too late, or three, you didn't have pollination, or four, you just didn't wait long enough because often there are male flowers that come out on the loofah gourds early in the season, and then later the female flowers start to follow. We noticed that the loofahs that were growing on the trellis very nicely were not really making very many loofahs until the vines went running way off into other areas of the garden. And then they started setting female blooms, and those female blooms rapidly developed into more loofahs than we can use. And that's great. That means we can grow loofahs one year and then maybe skip the next year. But it, it's a long season. There are male and female flowers, so you're gonna need pollinators. And so you've just gotta give it time and wait for the loofahs to appear. And if you are maybe in zone three or four, you might just not have a long enough season to grow loofahs. They're, they're gonna take some time. The loofahs were part of cutting edge German technology, which was very scary until it burned up. Thanks for joining me today as we took a look at this beautiful, incredible, unbelievable, fantastic, most useful of vegetables. And we also had the gift of having an actual scientist here with us to talk about Lufa Egyptiaca, the Lufa, the sponge that is not from the sea. 
If you want to get some seeds, uh, my daughter has a limited amount in her seed store. And of course, you could learn about this and many other vegetables in my books. I'll put a link to the books below. I'll catch you all soon. And until next time, may your thumbs always be green. saw Lufa punch a police officer in space on television. It was all real, but they're generally kind. People hate these videos. People really hate it when I do this. That's why I keep doing it.